We've got college basketball, NBA, and Thursday night football tonight. And I swept the board yesterday. So guess what? I'm back today with three more best bets for you. This is the free three. What's up, guys? It's your boy Noble Living back with another DYF bets video where I'm breaking down my favorite picks and plays of the day as you just try to get to the bag together and make some money. Like I mentioned earlier, we just swept the board yesterday. Three is okay. Let's go, baby. We've been on fire the month of November. We're keeping the momentum going. Cashing on Kyle Kuzma points, no sweat bet there. Cashing on the Spurs team total under. Now I'm gonna lie to you. We, we sweated that one a little bit. I was counting down those seconds and counting down the missed shots, but hey, we got it done. We also cashing on the Drake team total over. Three best bets and three winners for you guys on Wednesday night. Hopefully, we can keep that momentum going again today. You can see our record here to date right here. Absolutely killing it so far to start the month of November. 13-4. and four. You love to see that. We're crushing it in NBA. We've been starting to get that college basketball momentum going, so hopefully, we can keep that hot streak going. And today, guys, listen, I've got three more winners for you, so you don't want to miss out on this. If you can, drop a like on the channel and subscribe i'd greatly appreciate it if i've been making you money i would really appreciate it if you guys just share this with somebody or just repost it whatever you can do to show some love guys i really appreciate it i'm just trying to get to our first 200 subscribers we cracked 100 subscribers last week so thankful now let's climb to 200 250 let's keep that momentum going and let's dive into these first best bets for my first best bet of the day, I am headed to the hardwood. I'm going to the association. Not a lot of games to choose from in the NBA, but you know what? We're going to find a winner. And guess what? Totals have been our friend all this week. And I'm not trying to be a one-trick pony out here, but listen, it's cashing. It's making us money. So I'm just trying to exploit it for as long as possible. So with a small slate, and the biggest opportunity for me lies with a game that has just a very high total. And I think this one's going to go over. So for today, I'm going to go with the Bucks and Pacers over 241 and a half points. I would play this up to 243 and a half i know i have some guys who dm me after the show and say hey noble would you play it at this would you play it at that but this is why you got to join the premium discord because i put out the picks early as soon as i finish recording this video which normally happens around seven eight o'clock in the morning i drop those picks so this way you guys can get the lines and the odds but by the time my editors finish touching it it gets to the youtube channel around 1 p.m so because of that the odds might have moved the line might have moved so make sure you guys are clicking the link in the bio and joining our discord group so this way you guys can get those lines early before they move but i would play this one up to 243 and a half i got it at minus 110 odds on FanDuel. you can shop around to kind of get your best value here and the reason why i like this pick is because i'm just going to keep working this angle until it falls off the pacers don't play defense like they literally don't play defense i really think their strategy right now is to see which team can reach 130 points first and that's the team that's going to win the game if you look at some of their recent game logs right they played the jazz the final score of that game was 134 to 118 that was a total of 252 and can you believe that game went under because that total actually closed at 254 that's absolutely wild to have a total at 254 but look at some of the other games that we took that spurs matchup earlier this week when they took on the spurs they won that game 152 to 111 that was a total of 263 that flew over they played charlotte the game before that the final score of that game 124 125 249 combined total cleveland 121 to 116 237 total Total, the line of that game was 230 so it went over and then they also played boston the score was 104 155 they lost that game the total in that matchup was 233 they flew over with a final combined score of 259 so you can see here the scores that are going on when the pacers play you can already see how high these totals are set by the lines and how they're even going over even though we already have a high total in eight games this year the pacers are seven and one to the over and they're five and one to the over at home well guess what this game's at home today for them so that's another reason why I like the over. But guess what? Now let's look at this Bucks team. They're also an over team this year. They're 5 and 2 to the over this year and 2 and 0 oh to the over on the road. So again, everything is telling us to take the over right now. Both of these teams can absolutely score the ball. The Pacers are number 1 team in the league in points per game, averaging about 126 points. Meanwhile, the Bucks are 8th in points per game. They're averaging 117 points per game. So even if you combine their what they're averaging, the Pacers at 126, the Bucks at 117, that gets us to around what like 245 or so right there so again that's over this total that we're seeing right now about a 241 and a half 242 okay both these teams play at a faster pace paces are number three in the nba in possessions per game while the bucks are number 11 both of these teams don't play any defense the bucks are 25th and the paces are 26th out of 30 teams and opponents points per game so everything that we're seeing from these matchups everything that we're seeing from the numbers is hey it's going to be a running gun matchup it's going to be a lot of threes a lot of shots 
taken and no defense being played so that's why i absolutely love the over in this matchup today i'm not trying to overthink it i'm not trying to get too cute i'm not trying to get too complicated let's just go with what the numbers have been showing us the bucks are probably going to rest chris middleton tonight for just injury purposes and i actually think that fits for them even better because chris middleton is more of like that mid-range game he likes to play a little bit slower but guess what we've got Giannis and dame as the main guys tonight i see a three and three type of game what's a three and three type of game three pointers and free throws i see Giannis putting that head down driving to the rim kicking out for the three point shots to Connaughton, to lillard to lopez and then i see lillard shooting at least six seven eight threes tonight and then also keep in mind that Giannis got ejected in that game last night so he should be a little bit more rested in this matchup right so he should be at full strength i think this is going to be a close game to start and then after it kind of can separate from there but i see the bucks really being able to score some points and the pacers not playing any defense but i think they should be able to get their fair share of points as well so let's go with two hot offenses that have been cashing on the overall season let's fade these defenses give me the bucks and pacers over 241 and a half play it up to 243 and a half as my first best bet of the day for my second best bet of the day we're going to stay on the hardwood but i'm going to go to the our younger counterparts here a team that i'm excited to watch this year in college basketball and they actually don't even have all of their players just yet and i'm talking about the usc trojans now obviously the player they're missing is Bronny james but reports have said that he might be able to be cleared to come back and play this season which actually would be pretty exciting i mean if i had a heart condition i don't know if i would play but listen all props to him if the doctors say he's good i'm sure he has the best doctors in the world then i'm excited to see him on the court and listen if he's on the court and even if he's not this is just going to be an exciting offense to watch all year long because they've got absolute bucket getters down there in south california first you got boogie alley he came back for his senior season and he's gotten better every single year that he's been in college basketball literally every single year his points per game have increased his efficiency has increased and he's been absolutely Absolutely stellar since he transferred from Memphis to USC. He averaged almost 18 points per game last season and he started off the season right on Monday when they played K-State and he finished that game with 24 points. Now Boogie is nice for sure like he can de definitely get some buckets but the guy that I'm really most impressed with when that K-State win was and who I'm eager to watch play this entire season is the number two overall recruit Isaiah Collier. This dude can absolutely hoop. He was a phenom in high school so I wanted to see how this would translate to the college game and on Monday Monday, he looks like a five-star recruit who is ready for the college game. He had 18 points, six assists on seven of nine shooting in just 26 minutes before he fouled out the game. He drove the ball hard to the rim. He was fearless against the K-State big man, and he hit some tough and ones. So I love to see that. He had a really good game there, and I think this is a good dynamic duo that USC has there to complement some of the big men they got as well. So I think this is going to be one of the most potent offenses that we see in all of college basketball, certainly in the Pac-12, and that's why I'm going to isolate their team total today i'm gonna go with usc team total over 82 and a half points as my second best bet of the day now if you can play this one up to 84 and a half i got it at minus 115 odds i'm sure this one's gonna move throughout the day like i said 84 and a half 85 is kind of like my number there but 82 and a half is the number i got it at that's the line that the book set it at and i really like that number today they take on cal state bakersfield today a team that you probably never heard of because they play in the big west and this is just a huge major mismatch i mean we see it on the spread the spread's like 26 27 points so that tells us that that it's a mismatch in and of itself but cal state they won their first game of the year earlier this week they won 73 to 72 against southern utah quick trivia question for you guys what conference is southern utah in yeah, it doesn't really matter, right? Because guess what? It's not the Pac-12, it's not a Power 5 school, and it certainly doesn't have the likes of and talent of a team like USC does. When you saw that USC dropped 82 points, and that would have hooked on this current line, on a K-State team, yes, a K-State team that's a Power 5 school, the team that took the nation by storm last year by going all the way to the Elite 8, now obviously don't have some of the same pieces as they did last year, you know, seniors like Norman Powell left that team. But now, think about this. K-State, a Power 5 school, gave up 82 points to USC. Now we've got a total of 82 and a half against a very small mid-major team that just gave up 72 points to Southern Utah. Southern Utah. Come on now. Like, yeah, USC should fly over this total. They should absolutely be able to get buckets. And then also keep in mind, USC scored 82 points and K-State had 23 offensive rebounds. 23 so you know how many second possessions that is do you know how many extra shots that is do you know how many free throw attempts that causes just from like little putbacks and fouls and things of that nature and they still won that game by 13 cal state bakersfield they don't have the size to compete with usc in this matchup they've got 
Ford who's 6'7. They have got another lanky, skinny sophomore who's about 6'10, and that's it. The shortest player for USC is Spooky Ellis, and he's 6'3. They've got their two forwards right there who are about 6'11, who can shut down things in the paint. They have one of the best rim protectors in all the Pac 12. So I think that you can sprinkle a little bit on the spread, as I do think they'll cover the 26, 27 points. But personally, I'm not a big fan of sweating major spreads. So because of that, I'm just going to isolate it to the team total. USC should be able to run and gun, get their points today. Cal State does play at a little bit of a slower pace, but I think the fact that they don't have the size to get multiple possessions and they don't turn over a lot of people a lot, and USC should be able to protect the basketball. USC should be able to get over this total today. So let's go USC team total over 82 and a half as my second best bet of the day. We're going to isolate it to this potent offense and let's hopefully they can cash in again for us. Now for my third and final best bet of the day, I'm going to head to that Thursday night football matchup. I had to put this bet last because truthfully this game tonight is going to be an absolute snooze fest. I mean, come on now. Like, does anybody want to bet on the Panthers versus the Bears? But hey, we're D-Gens. This is what we do. We're going to bet on it anyway. This is what we this is what we're here for. So let's do it, right? So I'm going to go with a parlay builder in this one. So I'm going to do a parlay builder and just tease it down to play it safe. I know some people have been tailing calling our shot on their ladder challenge. Hate to see that they lost last night. I think they made it five days in a row to cash in on those. So let me help you guys a little out today if you want to do kind of do like a ladder leg or kind of just do a little parlay bankroll builder. And I'm going to go with Chubber Hubbard, 10 plus carries. And I'm going to parlay that with Cole Komet, three plus receptions. It gets you to minus 108 odds. Now, obviously not plus 100 odds. If you want to play around with the numbers to get you that value or shop around in your books to get you to plus 100 odds, be my guest. Minus 108, damn near is plus 100. You can't be mad at that. Almost double your money. But I really like this bet today. So let's look at this first leg first and let's look at Chubba Hubbard, okay? I'm not 100% sure why the Panthers paid Miles Sanders money. Because, I mean, they paid him a huge contract this past offseason. And I don't know if he's falling out of favor with the coaching staff. I don't know what's happening. But ever since he went down with the injury, Hubbard has stepped in and has taken over the lead running back role. In the last five weeks, look at Hubbard's carries. He had 14 carries. He had 9 carries. Then he had 19 carries. 15 carries and then 16 carries he's flown over this total in four of the last five games and the one time that he had underneath 10 carries the panthers were getting blown out okay so it basically makes sense i'm just gonna ride with that trend today now the bears do have a strong rush defense so i'm gonna stay off the yards but if you just want to take his 11 and a half carries as a single play be my guest i do like that as well but with the spread in between the threes because we're seeing about a minus three and a half favor for the bears here and a total under 40 that tells me that this should be a low scoring game it tells me this should be a close game which means that there's no really reason for the pass game to be dominant over the run game so even though the bears do have a good rush defense i think the panthers should run the ball just as the least as like an effort to kind of distract from the pass game or be able to keep the defense honest in the pass game and not become one dimensional now if it obviously becomes a blowout this thing could go a little bit differently but i don't think it's going to be a blowout because we just don't even know who's going to be the quarterback for the bears right we don't know if it's going to be justin fields the reports that he's going to play there's also the reports that it's going to be Tyson Bajan. I think I just say his name, Tyson Bajan, the D2 guy. I don't know if he's going to be the quarterback, right? But all I know is I think this one should be close. I think both these teams have the opportunity to win this game today, and I think they're going to play like it. But one person who should be involved in that Bears offense, regardless of who's the QB, should be Cole Komet. The tight end for the Bears has been absolutely on fire this year. He's been a great safety valve, especially for Tyson. And I think this is a great opportunity. We need him to get three receptions. He's gone over that total in six of eight games this year so he should be able to do that and he's been trending in the right direction he had six receptions last week and he had 10 receptions the week before that i love to see that we only need three receptions and the other thing that i really love especially if tyson badgett is the quarterback to go tonight one thing about young rookie quarterbacks one thing about young qbs is they get their safety valves look at bryce young who's his safety valve adam Thielen, right like if you watch a lot of young quarterbacks they find their guys that they tend to zone in and this is what i use last week when I gave you guys DeAndre Hopkins because Will Levis zoned in on DeAndre Hopkins. Look at how many times he targeted him last week, right? So because I think Cole Komet has kind of become that safety valve for Tyson Badgett today, and I think that he's also just a big red zone threat as well. So because of that, I should be able to see him be able to get these receptions. I've been basically going the opposite way of what the numbers have been telling us all season. The Panthers have a strong pass defense, but I'm going to go with Komet's receptions. The Bears have a strong rush defense, but I'm going with Hubbard's carries. 
now call me crazy i don't know but i think again because of how close this game is because of the potential that both of these teams can win this game and we have a low total that it's just going to bring out a lot of dink and dunk football a lot of small football both of these quarterbacks are not stretch it down the field go gun deep type of quarterbacks so because of that i think the run game is going to be established and the titans are going to be established so give me chubba hubbard 10 plus carries cole commit three plus receptions not ask them to do too much minus 108 as our last and final best bet for our parlay builder to end off the night well that's it for me today my friends three bets three winners that are headed your way we've been having absolutely on fire this week i appreciate all the love and support that you guys have been giving me on twitter the dms the comments the book it sports team the community everybody man i greatly appreciate it i've been doing this for a long time and it's just cool now to kind of be able to give back and give it to you guys man so i'm greatly appreciative let's cash in tonight let's have us a night bucks and pacers over 241 and a half points usc team total over 82 and a half and then our parlay builder with chubber hubbard 10 plus carries Cole Komet, three plus receptions, parlay those together right there. Three best bets, three winners for you on this Thursday night. For more best bets and for more of my premium picks and plays, make sure you click the link in the bio, join our free Discord group. And as always, dictate your fate, get to that money, shoot me a message. If you need anything, drop a comment below with your pick so this way I can tell you guys. And as always, let's get to that cheddar. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Later, guys.